clarity, but when you pay attention, this is exactly what it's talking about. So you have the choir director or the choir, you know, singing these songs and praising God and creating music, creating sound. In church, they pass around the hymn, which hymn goes back to Greek hymnos, which another way we can look at and say uh, the Greeks, as always say, created the Bible. But a hymn goes back to hymnos, which is Greek. So understand when you see a preacher, you know, allowing a gay person to run a church choir, or you always go to church and you see like a gay person playing the organ, or you always hear preachers refer to a gay person at a church that's running a choir or playing an organ. This is all Masonic code, all of it. Trust me, because one, first of all, if you're true to the religion as a preacher, most of these preachers you see what they do when they come across a homosexual, they try to cast demons out or what have you, it's bullshit. The ones that allow it are the ones who are probably Masons. They do it to show Masonic ties. And it's a secret thing that a lot of people who are only in secret societies will understand what they're doing. But it's alluding to Satan. It's alluding to a lot of different things. So they're showing you that, hey, I understand sound. I understand frequency and vibration. I understand what this stuff goes back to. I understand that Satan goes back to frequency and sound. Satan deals with material. I know all this stuff. So I'm going to let this gay dude run a choir. I'm going to let this gay dude play the organ or what have you. And this is all to show what this stuff is going back to. And to you, what's a, you know, Regular Joe Blow is just seemingly, you know, what is it? What is it? It's no problem. It's just, you know, dude playing the piano, dude singing in the choir. I don't get it. But this is the stuff they do. This is why I wanted to touch on that in the beginning about Masonic codes and initiations and what they do in movies and everything that they do. To you, you just won't get a lot of this stuff. It's going to seem stupid to you. It's going to seem like, huh, what are you talking about? What's money even brings it up? But they do this stuff for a reason. This is, this is to basically, you know, show fidelity, to show their knowledge on what they do. This is what Masons do all the time. When they take the pictures and you see them with all the poses and everything, this is saying, I'm a, I'm a Mason. I'm in a secret society. This is what I know. I'm down. I'm in. And this is exactly what these people do. So you got to understand when you see certain things, there's reasons behind it. So when you understand that, you know, Satan's job was music, music. You understand now about the music industry and why it's surrounded, you know, by Satanism and all these so-called Illuminati, Satanic codes or what have you. All this stuff goes back to this, the understanding of this knowledge or what have you. But when you see it and you understand how, you know, Satan goes back to material, you can understand why people say material is evil. People are consumed with the materialistic world and materials. People will kill for it. People do unspeakable things to get money to get material, to get fame so they can get these things. People are attached so much to the material, physical world, and it's all due to deception. And understand when we look at what this stuff is tied to, it's tied to the music that's putting out this culture. It all goes back to satanic things, to Satan. So when we talk about frequency and vibration, we talk about the manipulation of sound and how it's basically controlling people. We understand what, what controls this stuff. Material. Material. It goes back to material. It goes back to these corporations that's controlling the material. So when I showed you about how all these corporations, you see the celebrities throw up the eye, throw up the hand signals or what have you to show their fidelity. But you see the corporations put up Saturn. They put, you know, they hide satanic things within their logos to show you what they down with, that they are the bringer of these materialistic things representing the materialistic world, Satan materialism. This is where all this stuff goes back to. Now, all this stuff couldn't exist if it wasn't for the government who's at the top of all of it, regulating and allowing all these corporations and companies to exist under them. You can't get no corporation or get your stuff incorporated and get yourself out there without the government. You have to pay taxes. You have to do certain things. You got to pay the boss. Who are they paying their money to? They're paying it to the government. The government is at the top. As I said, the government is God. The government is Satan. I mean, think about it. Why the hell would the Bible say that Satan is the God of this world? Think about that. That's stupid. Why would, why would it say that? Didn't God just create this world? And God, like, the God, like God is God. How can Satan be God? I don't, I don't get that. So a lot of people don't let this stuff sink in because they are so bamboozled by the lie and all the, the fairy tale stories of the Bible. They don't stop and think, why the hell would you call Satan a God? 
Why would you put him on the same status and level as God himself? Wait a minute. Don't we call God God? Why would we call Satan God? They're not the same. God created Satan. What's going on? And people can't fathom this. You know, you read in the Bible, Lord, the Lord God, Lord Almighty. Huh? White people call themselves lords. They're calling themselves lords for a long time. How can they do that? What is that? How can we call, you know, the Lord, the Lord, when these people are calling themselves Lord, which basically Lord just means a person who has power and authority over other people, a person who is in control, a chief, government, people in power, the powers that be. These people have been calling themselves Lords for a long time. And then you sit and you read in the Bible, Lord God, and these people have been calling themselves gods and lords for a long time. And then people can't connect dots. This is what it's talking about. And it's not a coincidence that we see Lord, Lord, Lord. And we get the King James Bible from an English King James. Think about it. And people are just so blind and oblivious because they don't understand that their mind is being controlled by the frequency, by the vibration, which we'll get into more. It all goes back to Satan controlling the material, physical world that we live in. So we can look at this thing and say, well, so what? You know, frequency and vibration, they're talking about Satan. Satan is not real. We get it. Yeah, yeah. It goes back to frequency and vibration. But this stuff is deeper than you can imagine. Deeper than you can imagine. And the fact that so much emphasis is put on Satan and his deception and what he represents, it doesn't get any more evil and bad than Satan. Not to say that frequency and vibration is bad because it goes back to energy. It goes back to you. You are Satan, you are frequency and vibration. So understand that it's why they're using Satan and saying this dude is the worst being of all ever. Even though he's fictional, he still represents that. And you got to understand when you believe in something, if everybody believe it, then it basically is real. It comes true, plain and simple. And that's something we'll touch on. But even though he's not and you have people that are skeptical about his existence, it is what it is. Nonetheless, what he represents goes back to these things. And it's basically a danger warning for a reason about Satan, which we're going to get into because you got to understand. So one, you have vibration, frequency, energy all out there traveling throughout the cosmos, all throughout our physical material world, everywhere. We are transmitters, we are receivers, and we are receiving and transmitting these frequencies that is all everywhere, that is all over the place. And we transmit this stuff or we decode it into basically what we call our senses, you know, hear, taste, touch, smell, or what have you. And this is how we decode this information. So now all this stuff is what? Electrical signals interpreted by the brain, just like Morpheus said, and that's all it is. Remember, energy. Vibration, all this stuff is electrical signals. This is what we get in, interpreted by the brain into what we call our senses. Taste, smell, touch, sight, or what have you, all that stuff. We'll get into that a little bit more deeper. But that's what it is. So they're using all this stuff against us. Now, when you transmit all this information, you're transmitting it right into your consciousness and it's being stored within your subconscious, whether you understand that or not. Whether you consciously understand what you just took in or not, your subconscious does and it's storing this information and it's in there. So, as I said, this stuff goes back to music, sound. They are controlling us with visualization and stimulation of music, stimulation of these visual things, things that we desire, things that our hearts desire. That's a huge thing when people say that. If they really understand what it means, which, which we'll touch on, but it's a big thing. So we have this stimulation. We have this music that we have been listening to all of our lives. Now, how many of you have heard about the controversy between the music frequencies? That's a big thing. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of people don't know what this stuff was about, but I'm going to settle the whole thing right here because you'll see about it as you go into studying what we're talking about here after you do your own research, of course. Now, you have the whole argument that 432, which is the normal uh, frequency for music, 432 hertz, 432 hertz supposedly being uh, transformed into 440 hertz. 
And you have a lot of people complaining about that saying they don't sound the same or they're doing this to mess with our frequency, they're doing this to mess with our minds or what have you. And a lot of people are obsessed with the 432 and the 440. So now the 432 hertz is supposed to resonate with the earth, with love. It's supposed to resonate with our DNA. It's supposed to resonate with so many different frequencies. 432 is supposed to resonate with the pyramids. It's supposed to resonate with Stonehenge and so many different things, the sun, the moon, so many different things we find 432 in. It is a resonant frequency that we resonate with, that we dealt with for, uh, we dealt with since the beginning of time. It's a amazing frequency. And 432, when you add it up, it's nine. Four plus three, seven plus two, nine. So nine, what is that? And that's a huge deal that we're going to get into that some of you probably know about, but probably not as deep as we're about to go into now. So nine is the most significant number in the universe. Nine has existed long before we ever call it nine. Nine represents the divine completion. Nine is the end all be all because once you are completed, so shall you be. So nine is called a divine completion. Nine, we know, is the last number in the counting system. We have one to nine, zero, zero, and then that's it. Everything else, of course, is a combination of those numbers. So nine represents divine completion. Nine is the most significant number. Nine is everywhere. So now, when I first started studying Nikola Tesla, which was a long time ago, uh, Nikola Tesla made a big difference in my life personally. I don't talk about him that much, but um, if it wasn't for Tesla, I, it wouldn't be a Merkaba, put it like that, as far as me having that name, which I'll talk about. But Tesla did so much. Tesla was a genius. And um, he discovered a lot. And once you start really getting into Tesla, and I've read everything, probably everything that he's put out, and almost everything that everybody ever written about him that he's supposed to have said or did, yeah, I knew about it. I read about it. Trust me. Tesla, what he was doing, once you start getting into this information, you get to a point. Some of the people that you'll come across, you'll understand their significance and the contribution that they gave to humanity. And it's a, it's a select few that did outrageous things to me. And this is just blowing it out the water. <laughs> when you start studying the man, you'll understand. To me, it's not too many people that come close to what this dude discovered. And what this dude discovered is mind boggling when you understand it to its totality, which is why they let him right away in a fucking hotel room. And they basically made sure he could not get any of his inventions really off the ground, that he could not unleash the unbelievable knowledge that he had that he learned from your ancestors, from the Egyptians. So, of course, at the top of my list would, of course, be, you know, the Egyptians. But right under them is Tesla, because Tesla gave us a lot. But he gave us basically what our ancestors left for us in Kemet that's still waiting for us today to discover, which is why I study Kemet so hard, because it's all there. But Tesla is a key into all of that, which you'll understand as we go along. But when you get into the information that the universe is numbers, when you get into all that and you start understanding what that stuff really means and it start blowing your mind, you're going to start finding something with Tesla about the Tesla codes. You have the Tesla codes, the 369 codes, you have the nine codes, you have all this stuff that's going to start getting into vortex math. This is all crazy stuff that we'll get into down the line eventually. But it, it basically goes back to Tesla, goes back to the ancient Egyptians and what Tesla has discovered about the Egyptians. So now Tesla is studying, you know, all of this stuff and he understood about vibration and frequency and sound and that this stuff goes back to numbers. And obviously, of course, the powers that be did as well, which is why they, they stifled them. But when he started getting into this stuff, he found out some interesting things about the, uh, the pyramids of Giza. Now, when you get into all this stuff with the ancient Egyptians, it all goes back to the number nine. And I'll explain in a little bit what it has to do with music and the uh, four, three, two hertz, because it all matches up. It all goes together. It's really deep. 
So, you know, what ancient Kemet, of course, they know about Nam. Tesla understood this. And it's a lot of freaky stuff that we already know about the number nine. Again, as I said, it is the end of the, the counting system. Nine is just end. Everything else is extra numbers. But we also know that any number uh, times nine equals nine. When you add all the numbers together, except nine, it equals 36, which three plus six equals nine. You have a circle, which is 360 degrees. You know, three, six equals nine. Half of a circle, which is 180. 180 equals 9. Half of that, which is 90, you have 9. Half of that, which is 45, you have 4 and 5 equals 9. If you keep going down, you're going to keep finding 9. So, you know, you have half of 45, which is 22.5. Half of that, which would be 11.25. 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5 gives you 9. You want to keep going. We go half of that, which would be 5.625, which equals 18 when an 8 is 9. We can keep going down and down and down. In every instance, you will find half of will always equals 9. But always equals 9. So we've seen the documentaries about the pyramids and they talk about the speed of light and what have you and all these other things that they have put into the Great Pyramids. So we look at the speed of light which is 186,282, which if you add those numbers together, you'll get 27. Two and seven equals nine. We equal nine if you do the 666. Six electrons, six protons, six neutrons. 666 gives us 18, gives us nine. You are carried for nine months. Woman, she's carried a baby for nine months. So we find nine everywhere and it's so deep that a lot of people have absolutely no clue where this stuff goes. Now, also, if you put in any kind of symmetrical shape, you know, like a square or triangle or octagon into a circle, every single one of those angles at every point will equal to nine. I mean, it's crazy, it's mind boggling. When you look at the flower of life, the tree of life, all the angles, everything, all equal nine. It's mind boggling when you think about it. So when you think about consciousness moving, when they show you the creation, uh, you know, the tree of life, the flower of life, or what have you, they always show you the circle. And that's nine right there. And when consciousness moved and created the next step, and I showed you guys this in the energy video, we have nine. All of those breakdowns is going to give you nine. It's something that's completely amazing. So, you know, Tesla, in studying, you know, pyramids, Tesla figured out that the pyramids, of course, were energy generators, plain and simple. Energy generators that not only generated energy, but they produced sound. They had a concentrated frequency and vibration and produced sound because of the acoustic properties of the pyramids themselves. I just came out of the pyramids when I was in Kemet and I was up there in the acoustics room. Unfortunately, my phone overheated and I couldn't record anything. I think everybody's phone overheated and you couldn't bring cameras in that place. But it's amazing. And you can make noise and you can hear it and it's just, it vibrates, you know, crazy. It's an unbelievable experience. But he took all of this information and he, he said to himself, well, this stuff, it's, it's an energy, it's an energy fucking generator. So <laughs> that's what it is. These people had wireless energy. They understood nine. You know, as I said, you know, studying Tesla is how I came up. Is why I use Merkaba. One, when you take a uh, tetrahedron. You take one tetrahedron, you take two tetrahedrons. First tetrahedron is basically like a three-sided pyramid when you look at it. You have one that fits into a pyramid shape. But when you take two, you not only get a shape that can fit perfectly, you know, inside of the Great Pyramid, but it creates a Merkaba. So you have a Merkaba that can fit inside of the Great Pyramid. This Merkaba has eight vortices. When you add those vortices together, you get 36, which three and six equals nine. If you look at my YouTube channel, if you go there, you know, it's been youtube.com uh, slash Merkaba nine. And I put that, put that there for a reason. When I set out to give this information, I know I will ultimately get to this point and start discussing Tesla and what, which we'll get in more Tesla and a bunch of other people's information down the line. But that's mind boggling. Trust me. Uh, I knew, you know, I wanted to talk about this and put this information out there and um, to get people to understand uh, uh, what I talk about.